Bradley Manning's attorney, David Coombs, is with us exclusively. Mr. Coombs, good morning. It's good to see you. Good to be here, Savannah. First question is about this issue of parole. He's eligible in seven years. Assuming good behavior, do you expect him to be out of prison in seven years? I expect him to be out, but I actually expect him to get pardoned. Uh, Rio Band one four. Bro. Yep, he's got a weapon too. Hotel two six, Crazy Horse one eight half five to six individuals with AK forty seven. Request permission to engage. Roger that. Uh, we have no personnel east of our position, so uh, you are free to engage over. All right, we'll be engaging. Since the tragic events of nine eleven, our country has been at war. We have a breaking news story to tell you about. Apparently, a plane has just crashed into the World Trade Center here in New York City. We have been at war with an enemy that chooses not to meet us on a traditional battlefield. On my orders, the United States military has begun strikes against Al-Qaeda terrorist training camps and military installations of the Taliban regime in Afghanistan. By aiding and abetting murder, the Taliban regime is committing murder. And due to this fact, we've had to alter our methods of combating the risks posed to us in our way of life. Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world that the United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al Qaeda. I initially agreed with these methods and chose to volunteer to help defend my country. It was not until I was in Iraq and reading secret military reports on a daily basis that I started to question the morality of what we were doing. It was at this time I realized that our efforts to meet the risk posed to us by the enemy, we have forgotten our humanity. Light them all up. Come on, fire! Hey, Roger. examination of conventional wisdom. Newsbeat is produced and distributed by MP Studios, a division of Mori Publishing. Newsbeat. Listen. Learn. Hey, everybody. This is Manny Faces, producer of Newsbeat. I want to welcome you back to another episode where we take an unconventional look at conventional wisdom. Newsbeat is brought to you by our sister company, Mori Publishing, an inbound marketing, sales support, and web design firm based in New York. You can find out more about them at morepublishing.com. In this episode, we'll be exploring the disclosures made by former Army Private Chelsea Manning, known back then as Bradley Manning. These disclosures included hundreds of thousands of documents and most importantly, video evidence of what many would consider to be a war crime committed by the United States. Helping us to explain all of this is Kevin Gostola, managing editor of Shadowproof and co-host of the Unauthorized Disclosure Podcast. You could actually make the argument that by her disclosures, you had more of a backlash from government. Trevor Tim, executive director of the Freedom of the Press Foundation. The Chelsea Manning disclosures cannot be overstated as far as their importance to journalism and the public's understanding of American and world diplomacy. And John Kiriakou, a former CIA analyst turned whistleblower who spent 30 months in prison for revealing the illegal Bush-era torture program. I think there was a conscious effort to obscure the fact that Chelsea Manning had revealed evidence of a crime. And of course, another incredible lyrical contribution by our friend and artist in residence, Silent Night. All right, here it is. This is Chelsea Manning, Collateral Murder Cover-Up. Chelsea Manning is a uh, U.S. Army whistleblower, and she's known for releasing the Iraq and Afghanistan war logs and the uh, and Guantanamo files and then U.S. diplomatic cables. Probably the one that has received the most widespread attention and possibly convinced more people that she deserves to be treated like a whistleblower is the Apache helicopter attack in Baghdad, the collateral murder video. Item all up. Item all up. This happened uh, in 2007. And, and what you see in the video is that there were two employees that were working for Reuters who were gunned down by this um, 
Apache helicopter. Come on, fire! At that time, uh, there's what was uh, that they refer to him as a good Samaritan. Someone pulls up with a van and has two children in the van, right down there by the body, and and trying to help people who were wounded uh, is shot up. The the people, uh, the the soldiers in the video can be heard. Uh, they have they have bloodlust. A bunch of bodies laying there. Yeah, we got one guy crawling around. Oh yeah, look at that, right through the windshield. Yeah. Guy just drove over a body. It's something that Chelsea talked about during the court martial uh, that she was very struck by. Oh, it's their fault for bringing their kids to a battle. That's right. And then the video really is this kind of like war porn. It's something that a lot of soldiers in her unit, particularly intelligence analysts, were watching uh, when they were working in the uh, facility where she was going through uh, all of her uh, files on a daily basis because she was part of a, a, a unit that was putting together information that could be used to target high-value targets uh, in Iraq. The Chelsea Manning disclosures cannot be overstated as far as their importance to journalism and the public's understanding of American and world diplomacy. She leaked documents uh, to WikiLeaks who worked with papers like the New York Times and The Guardian to start releasing this treasure trove of information about how the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq were fought and also um, how the U.S. was in interacting with virtually every country in the world. It is a behind the scenes look at how U.S. diplomacy is carried out. Hundreds of thousands of State Department documents released by the whistleblower site WikiLeaks are revealing a hidden world of backstage international relations, divulging candid comments by and about world leaders from allies such as Germany to nations like Libya. These disclosures, among other things, were uh, credited with uh, sparking the Arab Spring uh, and even at least the initial end of the Iraq War uh, in 2011. Uh, Obviously, we're back in in Iraq now, and it seems like a never-ending war. Um, But uh, the uh, impact of of Chelsea Manning's disclosures on showing the world uh, war crimes that have been committed around the world uh, by other countries and also uh, war crimes that the U.S. turned a blind eye to has been uh, revelatory. She deserves to be talked about with uh, the most significant whistleblowers of the 20th and 21st century. I think that initially at least, some of the disclosures were obscured, um, and that's uh, partly the U.S. government's doing. Nobody learned Chelsea Manning's name, who's then known as Bradley, until um, she was arrested and held incommunicado in military prison, where she was not allowed to talk to reporters, was not allowed to give any public statements uh, about why she did what she did. That created a situation where it was really the U.S. government who was able to kind of create the narrative uh, about what Chelsea Manning did. And, uh, you know, we know now that they were uh, pretty much exaggerating and and, uh, in some cases making things up uh, pretty much from the start. You know, they were going around saying that Chelsea and the the papers who were reporting on the cables had blood on their hands, uh, that lives were at risk, uh, that people were going to be killed. Let's start with WikiLeaks about Julian Assange, you said this week, and his collaborators, they might already have on their hands the blood of some young soldier or that of an Afghan family. Let's be clear. This disclosure is not just an attack on America's foreign policy interests. It is an attack on the international community. We know now that, that, um, number one, Uh, They were privately admitting at the time that they were exaggerating this uh, to help their legal case. Um, And number two, that uh, in her trial, the U.S. government could not point to even one person who was physically harmed uh, by her leaks. Often we would hear from his detractors, my God, the damage that he did. And often we would hear from government officials saying, oh, he put lives in danger. The guys that are out there in the field. Uh, Courthouse News Service, Adam Klosfeld wrote about this. He made a good point. He said, three years of journalistic scrutiny into the effects of the leaks could not uncover a case of intelligence source who was killed or injured because of the disclosures. The military's position took another hit Wednesday, the article explains, as the former Brigadier General who headed the Information Review Task Force investigating the leaks said that he had never heard that a source named in the Afghan war logs was killed. How about 
the former defense secretary, Secretary of Defense Robert Gates. What did he say? He said, the rhetoric about the supposed harm caused by the leaks was fairly significantly overwrought. This is uh, kind of a symptom of the U.S. government's uh, obsession with secrecy that there are millions and millions of documents that are classified each year and that much of this information uh, could show wrongdoing, could show waste, fraud and abuse, uh, illegal behavior, and generally information that uh, should be public in a democracy where we value transparency. Uh, yet because they have this monopoly on secrecy, often isn't. And so when this type of information actually gets published in newspapers, it's, it's very valuable to the public. Yet the government paints this as, as, as harmful to national security when the benefits far outweigh uh, any of the hypothetical harms that they often bring up. We hear what they want us to hear. That's just the facts, though. If so facto, we live in a fiasco. They digging away, we looking like wackos. Digging up dirt, theorizing, rocking a tin hat and a lab coat. If that don't work, then you gonna be made an example. You can't go around blowing the whistle on every scandal. Attack your character, and that's just half of it. To say you're putting the entire nation at risk. Look at the patterns with the ones emboldened, hunted, encroachment from Ellsberg to Manning to Snowden. You buy that lie that we wouldn't do our own answer. Look at Cointel Pro, look at the whole thing. And war crimes are classified, yeah, we know this, so you could get thrown in the cell for the crime of what? Exposing? Forget a slap on the wrist that cut off the whole limb where the real criminals don't even get as little as a scolding. Chelsea Manning leaked um, hundreds of thousands of documents. Most of those documents were probably overclassified. Believe it or not, overclassification is a crime in this country. It's illegal to call something confidential or secret when it's actually not confidential or secret. And much of what Chelsea Manning uh, provided to WikiLeaks was diplomatic uh, cable traffic, State Department cable traffic. Um, most of it was at the confidential level, which means it really doesn't uh, cause any harm to the national security. That stuff is, is really not important. What's important was that Chelsea Manning released to the press video evidence of US helicopter gunships killing civilians in Iraq. This is Bushman 7, go ahead. Roger, we have a black SUV or bongo truck picking up the body. Request permission to engage. This is Bushman 7, Roger, engage. 1 8, engage. Clear. Come on. Clear. Clear. That's a violation of international law. It's a violation of U.S. law. And um, it is legally considered to be a war crime. Now, it ought to be illegal to prosecute someone who has exposed a war crime. But we have such a backward system in this country that what the government does in most cases is it goes after the messenger. I don't believe that, um, that anybody in government really believed that Chelsea Manning had aided the enemy. Uh, providing documentary evidence of war crimes is in no way aiding the enemy. What aids the enemy is a torture program or a drone program uh, something around which the enemy can rally. This week, we reportedly launched deadly drone strikes in both Waziristan and Yemen. You probably didn't hear about them on the news unless you were watching this. Well, the U.S. has carried out another drone attack in Pakistan's rest of tribal areas, killing at least eight people. That's the only footage reporting either strike that we could find, and it's from the Iranian government's English-language TV station. A secret prison archipelago, uh, extraordinary rendition, the ABC News investigation into one of the CIA's most closely guarded secrets. For the first time, we're getting a look at what many call a torture prison, where the U.S. government has conducted some of the most rigorous interrogation techniques on top al-Qaeda suspects. That aids the enemy. That's what the enemy uses in its own propaganda to recruit new fighters. I don't think any serious person who followed this case believed that Manning aided the enemy. I believe that the charge of aiding the enemy was to warn other potential whistleblowers, look what we're doing to this Manning guy. 
We're gonna do the same thing to you or worse unless you keep your mouth shut. That's the message and that's really what's dangerous. I think there was a conscious effort among the mainstream media and the Obama administration and and certainly even Republicans uh, to obscure the fact that Chelsea Manning had revealed evidence of a crime and to focus on Manning's own gender dysphoria and on this issue of, of treason. This is a pet peeve of mine, and and you see it a lot on Fox News, you see it on Facebook, people throwing around the words traitor and treason. They don't know what they're talking about. You can't even be a traitor unless you provide aid and comfort to the enemy during a time of war. And there has been no declaration of war. Not only that, but nobody ever proved that Manning in any way aided the enemy. So this loose talk about treason, I think is dangerous to whistleblowers, but it's dangerous to our democracy as well. Our own propaganda, bipartisan, hard to win an argument when they rather slander you with their armament. It's not a party thing, it's blind patriotism refined well oil machine we have at our defense. A slippery slope, tip of the old iceberg for any soul looking for whistles to blow. That's fight words, the kind that might turn the whole country against you. There's certainly something to be said for that kind of pressure. Extreme measures for extreme times, they could be cruel and unusual but still it seems fine if the ends justify the means and the behavior it's okay to shoot the messenger if that messenger's a traitor so they paint him in that light from the beginning and retroactively so the court of public opinion's ready to witch hunt burying fist bump blaming the victims again a broken record that's how it's spun you could actually make the argument that by her disclosures you had more of a backlash from government where it actually doubled down on what it was doing. It doubled down on the way it manufactured and perpetuated war. It doubled down on uh, the secrecy of diplomats so that we would know, you know even less than we already did about what people do when they're selling corporate influence to other countries or um, Uh, apologizing and justifying human rights abuses in order to maintain relationships with, you know, like the Saudi regime or whatever. And that's, I I think that would be, be fair. Um, But I don't think that this conversation has benefited anybody when we're talking about what Chelsea Manning did. It's very reductive. And to just make it about hero versus traitor. So many people call you a traitor. Many call you a hero. Who is Chelsea Manning? One of the things that Chelsea Manning's enemies and detractors have done, and it's been actually quite successful, is to focus on homophobic attacks or transphobic attacks in order to try to somehow discredit Chelsea Manning as a person. Let's talk about Mr. Manning personally, and he has provided a statement that he wants us to read, and this is part of it. As I transition into this next phase of my life, I want everyone to know the real me. I am Chelsea Manning. I am a female. Given the way that I feel and have felt since childhood, I want to begin hormone therapy as soon as possible. I also request that starting today, you refer to me by my new name and use the feminine pronoun. Uh, I fear that that's the kind of society we're in now. I wrote an op-ed um, several years ago from prison that ran in The Guardian, and it was right after Ed Snowden had made his revelations. I had read an article in the New York Times that briefly discussed the brand of, of eyeglasses that he wore. And I said, is this what this is coming to? This man has just revealed vast crimes against the American people. And we're going to talk about what kind of eyeglasses he wears? This is something that the mainstream media is always guilty of. They focus on the messenger rather than on the message. We need to refocus that on the message. I don't care if Chelsea Manning is a man, a woman, or something in between. It makes absolutely no difference. The only thing that matters is that Chelsea Manning blew the whistle on a criminal act. That's what we should focus on.
the treatment and the and the punishment that Chelsea Manning received certainly um, the U.S. government was trying to send a message uh, to future leakers and whistleblowers. I mean, you know, not only did she receive a 35 year sentence, which was by far uh, almost 10 times the amount uh, of uh, of a sentence that any other leaker uh, had gotten in U.S. history, uh, but she was, uh, according to a lot of neutral observers, uh, literally tortured in prison. You know, held in solitary confinement. Um, forced to be stripped of all her clothes um, and uh, paraded around, um, forced to, you know, come out of her cell with no clothes on, uh, treated incredibly harshly, um, you know, the type of, of behavior that we criticize other nations for doing. She ended up serving seven years in jail, which was still the longest the longest sentence served uh, by any whistleblower in history. Um, But it's certainly uh, good to see that she is out and able to have her voice heard uh, now uh, than when for the seven years that she was in prison, uh, she was basically silenced. Who is Chelsea Manning? I'm just me. It's as simple as that. Look how we're treating our people, taking advantage of meek and the feeble. Like their whole beans illegal, talk about being deceitful. We shoot innocent women and children, talk of civilians, elderly too, in front of cathedrals. And say that they're the ones who's evil, hypocritical. Won't even look in the mirror though, that's typical, quick to throw. Mud and rocks, don't even know which way the river flow. That's pretty low, and no surprise someone will blow the whistle. But then we torture them, throw them in jail, stick them in Gitmo. Then pinpoint, what's the greatest way to switch the narrative? Cause them embarrassment, make them regret they ever challenged this. Transphobia. Homophobia or misogyny Racism or classism Or maybe probably the most obvious We play your fear Threat to our national security Okay, all clear We scream freedom of this and that Till it's just rhetoric A mess we're in Unless we can refocus the message Newsbeat is produced and distributed by MP Studios A division of Mori Publishing The producer of Newsbeat is Michael Conforti The editor-in-chief of Newsbeat is Christopher Tawarski. The managing editor of Newsbeat is Rashad Meehan. The executive producer of Newsbeat is Jed Morey. Show notes are available on usnewsbeat.com. Subscribe today on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you download your favorite podcasts.